Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 7. In this training tutorial, we're going to take a look at setting up our pressure sensors within our NSP software. This is going to be things like oil pressure, fuel pressure, and our manifold pressure sensors. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to set up different pressure sensors within our NSP software for our Haltech Elite systems. Now, we're going to start off the tutorial here with the most common type of pressure sensor you're going to be dealing with and probably configuring for your Elite system, and that's going to be a map pressure sensor. Now, we have an onboard map pressure sensor on our Haltech Elite that's a three bar, goes up to about 28 psi of boost, naturally aspirated engines and anything force induction that's under 28 pounds of boost, you can use that onboard map pressure sensor. You simply have to run a vacuum line from your intake manifold after the throttle body and run it to the nipple that's going to be found on your Haltech Elite box. We need to configure and point the Elite that it should be looking at that onboard map pressure sensor if that's what we intend on using. We'll take a look at how to do that here in just a little bit. But if we have a wire in map pressure sensor, so let's just say we're wiring in a three bar map pressure sensor. That's what I have fit it here to my example vehicle that I'm sitting in right now. We need to go and configure that specific voltage to vacuum or pressure scale. Now it's important that we have our map pressure sensor calibrated correctly because it's used as an input to many different type of tables throughout our entire calibration file here. So just for example, two of the most commonly referenced tables within our Haltech Elite here are gonna be our fuel and spark timing table. Looking here in our fuel tab right now, we're gonna find that this is gonna be our volumetric efficiency fuel table. Now, this is actually a representation of airflow coming into the engine. This is um, it's equivalent of what a map of mass airflow sensor would be. So a mass airflow sensor is fitted to your intake track that would measure, directly measure how much airflow is coming into the engine. This is estimating it. So it's the equivalent of being able to represent how much airflow is coming into the engine. And as a result, it's used within our fueling calculation to figure out how much fuel we need to deliver to the motor. We'll get into the specifics of what this table represents further in another tutorial, but for right now, what we need to take away from this, if we take a look at our break points, that's gonna be on the side here and on the top, we're gonna to find here that we have all these individual cell points in the table, we'll find that depending on where the engine speed, the engine RPM from the engine is going to be, as registered as a field here as RPM, and depending on what the manifold pressure is going to be, relative to our breakpoint axes at the top here, we'll be selecting essentially in, in working with the individual cell point at that precise point in time of the engine's operation. So we need to make sure that we're representing the manifold pressure correctly to our elite so that when it's looking up and trying to index these individual cell points, it's going to be grabbing the correct cell point so that we get our fuel calculations proper. Also, looking here at our spark timing, we'll find the table here for spark timing. It's gonna be where we wanna fire off the spark plug within our auto cycle. Again, not gonna get into the specifics of this. We'll have a dedicated tutorial on this, but note with this table, it's based on engine speed on the side, and then we also have our ignition load, which is gonna be our map pressure reading, and that's gonna be relative to whatever the map pressure sensor is showing. Now, again, it's gonna be looking up these individual cell points in the table relative to engine speed, relative to manifold pressure, and this is, again, where we wanna fire off our spark plug. If we have our map pressure sensor improperly calibrated, meaning that, let's say we have, um, we're really at something like zero PSI or four PSI of boost, but we're showing something like 15 or 10 PSI of boost, it's gonna be indexing in our table here incorrectly that spark timing. So we wanna make sure that the map pressure sensor is scaled correctly or the engine will never be calibrated right. Now, it's actually really easy to make sure we have things configured properly. Let's jump back here under our fuel tuning. We can take a look at our channel here as we key on engine off. So the ignition key is powered on right now in my vehicle. I'm sitting in the vehicle right now. The engine is not running. In this state, we should find here, depending on what unit scale you're working with, I have my unit set on pressure, KPA absolute, it should be showing here about 100 KPA key on engine off. Now that's relative to sea level. If you're at higher elevations, it'll be a lower value. So d depending on what that is going to be, if you're at 10,000 feet of elevation, the key on engine off status here of the map pressure reading might be something like 80 KPA. If you're at 5,000 feet, it might be something like 90 KPA. Again, that's gonna be relative to your uh, specific elevation that you're at. 
my elevation here is approximately sea level. So I should see that this is showing about 98 to maybe 102 kPa in my map pressure reading. Right now, we can see that it's off. It's not reading accurately at all. It's showing 197 kPa, which is the equivalent of about 14 psi of boost. So the engine's not running right now, and it's showing how I'm building for almost 14, 15 pounds of boost. Now, just a quick side note here. You can do the conversion between kPa to psi. PSI is a, is a gauge reference pressure, uh, if you're looking at a boost gauge. If we take 100 kPa and we multiply it by 14.5, that will give you the equivalent. So in this case, 100 kPa would be equivalent to 14.5 or 0 PSI, that's atmospheric pressure. And then if we're taking about another 200 kPa, that would be another 14.5 approximately. That's going to give us 14, 15 pounds of boost. That's how I'm getting that value as I was just describing. You can also convert this if you're not used to working in units of kPa. You can also go here to preferences into units and you can jump up here into the unit scale under pressure and we can change that from something like absolute kpa if you're used to thanks for checking out our teaser clip if you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current efi training we have to offer make sure you click right here if you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later